most of the battles took place in Europe. But there was one battle here in Kingston, 1758. Colonel Bradstreet came north from the British 13 colonies and attacked the French fort. Completely destroyed it. Then the British looked around the area and they said, well, nah, there's nothing here, let's go back to New York. So they did. New York was a fun town. Five years this area was empty and then finally the American Revolution got underway in 1776 so 1776 the American Revolution took place and that when that war was over in the 1780s anybody who didn't want to be an American came north got land grants from the British government and this area began to grow so this whole area is full of loyalists
insult to the school to take a bus on the parade square. So we're going to turn the corner here. All of the buildings on either side are dormitories for students. When they opened the school in 1876, there were 17 students. Today, there's about 2,000 officer cadets on the base at any given time. And today, there's about 15% of those cadets are female. It's free to go to school here. You just have to have the marks and the desire to serve the military. You can end up just a degree granting university. So when you graduate, you get a degree for free, but you must serve in the military five to seven years when you graduate. But if you want a military career, that's a pretty good deal. And the military is now very well paid.
1776. This piece of land here was the Royal Shipyards. This is where they built all of the boats for the War of 1812 that we had with America. When that war ended with the signing of the Rush Bangan Agreement, they decided to demilitarize the Great Lakes so warships can't go on the Great Lakes anymore without the permission of both nations. But at the end of the war, they had to get rid of all those uh, warships. So the Americans, they sold them to private enterprise, to entrepreneurs. But the British decided to sink all theirs. They're sunk out here in Navy Bay. So if you like to go scuba diving, this is a good place to do it because the water is cold enough that the wrecks of 1812 are still out there. Just one of those oddities of living in Kingston. Canadian Navy. Okay. And there's a yes, it's a joke. It's, it's not a, see the birds? That's the Canadian Air Force. That's the bombing squad. Don't don't, don't get under them. And up on the hill is Fort Henry. There was a fort there for the War of 1812, but it was just made out of wood. It wasn't very, very big. After the war in 1832, they decided to make something a little bit bigger. So that's the fort that you see today. They say that once it was built in 1832, the Americans sent their spies to, to find out the best way to attack the fort if they should ever decide to invade Canada. And the spies went back to Washington and said the fort is impregnable because in the 1800s, the British knew how to do two things very well, build forts and kill people. And both of those qualities, those attributes are displayed in Fort Henry today. So if you ever get an opportunity to go through the fort, it's quite an experience to see how it was for the military back in 1867. And again, back to the administration buildings for the school itself. It is the last military school in the country. As I say, if, you like to, if you'd like to go here, or if you know someone in your family who would like a military career, it's a good place to go to school. And we're very happy to have them here in Kingston. They come often downtown with their bright red tunics, their jackets, and it's a, it's a pleasure to have them here in the community. And it's all part of our military heritage that stretches all the way back to 1673. from the school unless you're a member of a sports team. Really? 
And one of one of the newest gifts to the school is just on Steve's side of the bus, on the driver's side. This is a LAV light armored vehicle. It was used in Afghanistan by the Canadian forces. It's brand new here. And as we leave the grounds, on the door side of the bus, you'll see a couple of tanks. The one closest to us is a Sherman tank from World War II. It's on a British Bailey Bridge. And a little bit further over, a Leopard tank, taken from the Germans in World War II. All of these are gifts from people who have graduated from the Royal Military College. Many people ask us about the, the white marshmallow across the street. It's a military sports complex. Insider tennis courts, soccer fields, all that sort of stuff. And the military built it on their property and the city asked them not to build it. They said it destroyed the historic entryway into the city of Kingston, but the military built it anyway. They said they wanted it for their members and they'd be willing to share it with the people who live in Kingston. The military came to an agreement with the city. They said, we'll build it, but we'll camouflage it so you won't even know it's there. So for six months out of the year, we didn't even see it. And then spring arrived. The snow melted. Now we can see it. It's a joke. <laughs> And I think you already passed CFB Kingston on top of the hill. Canadian Forces Base Kingston specializes in communications. When we were peacekeepers, the people of Kingston were the first people to go to the world's trouble spots because they'd set up communications for all those that would follow. And our military is still here in town and it's still the largest employer in the city of Kingston. So we're pretty well recession proof because you don't lay off the military. You always hire more. But we're going to go inside the city of Kingston as soon as the light changes. <laughs> so we head back to the city of Kingston. To do that, we go across the Cataraqui River, and we go across the La Salle Causeway, named after an early French explorer. There's been a bridge over the river here at this point since uh, 1824, because prior to that, there was a ferry that went back and forth. And that caused a bit of a problem for the soldiers here. The military is always over here. The bars of Kingston are always over there. And for the soldiers to go downtown was never a problem, but coming back they would be a little bit drunk and they'd fall off the ferry and drown. So the city got together with the military and put in a bridge here. They called it the Penny Bridge. For one penny, you got transportation over there and back again. And they always got the penny on what they called the sober side of the bridge. But it saved many British lives and it kept the bars of Kingston open because at one time in our history, there were as many as six bars in every block downtown selling beer to the soldiers. Big breakers. So this is the lift bridge. Boats can go from the lake to the inner harbor and the start of the Rideau Canal, which goes up to Ottawa. Coming up on Steve's side of the bus, the back side of Fort Frontenac. You can see the cannons still lined up, ready for the Americans if they come back. On Steve's side of the bus is the new Fort Frontenac, built by the British in 1784. Still in use today as a military educational facility for the uh, Canada military as well as the RCMP. The original French fort that was built in 1673 is on the door side of the bus. This triangle of stones is all that remains of that original French fort.
On Steve's side of the bus, there's a ferry that goes over to Wolf Island. It's part of the highway system, so it's one of the last two free ferries in the province of Ontario. If you want a free, free, bu uh, free boat ride, that's where you can take it. side of the bus there's going to be a 19-story building put in there. They've been trying to build on this lot now for about 25 years and they finally got permission to do it. Every time they've tried to build something here they do a little bit of digging and they find historical artifacts. So they'd have to shut down construction and archaeologists would come in and take a look around and it would close it for another year. So this has happened so consistently that finally this time they've got permission and they're going all ahead. So we'll have a, soon a 19-story building downtown. The only people who are happy about it are the, the owners of the property because nobody else wants a big building like that downtown. But we'll get one. There is the Pride Parade in the downtown core today, so it's a little bit busier than normal. Some of the regular streets that we use for our tour are closed. But as you can see, it's a wonderful place to hang out in the summertime, have a beer on the road, smell the bus fumes as we go by. Coming up in the next block will be our city hall. Our city hall was built 1843-1844 didn't even open until after the capital had been taken away from us and given to Montreal, but our city forefathers decided they wanted a city hall that befitted our status as a nation's capital. They wanted something very fancy. Uh, but unfortunately, when the capital left, all of the people did too, and so by the time the capital was in Montreal, we didn't need a city hall that was as big as it is, but we've still got it, of course. It almost bankrupted the city. After the capital left, they rented out space in City Hall to anybody who wanted it. So the original police station was inside City Hall. The original jail cells are in the basement. The fire department was inside City Hall. They rented out space to three different bars. There were three pubs inside City Hall in the 1840s. This is it uh, on Steve's side of the bus. But it's absolutely true. People will tell the stories about it that in the 1840s, you could go downtown to Kingston City Hall, you could get drunk, you could be arrested and thrown in jail and never leave the building. We call those the good old days in Kingston. But today in the, uh, the market square behind City Hall, there's a farmer's market that operates three days a week. The oldest English language farmer's market in Canada. And there's our beautiful City Hall. winter we have an ice skating rink here and we play a little three-on-three -three hockey with former National Hockey League players that come to town. Coming up on the door side of the bus, a government building from the 1850s. This is the Customs House. You can tell it's a government building. It's finished limestone construction. Very expensive, but it's a government building, so our tax is paid for it. The oldest church in the city is St. George's Cathedral. Right beside the bus on the door side, its roots go back to 1792. Beautiful cathedral. We're on King Street. Many of the homes on either side of the bus were built in the 1830s by the business people of Kingston who had their stores back on Princess Street and they lived out here, far enough away from the downtown core for peace and quiet but close enough they can get back to their jobs. This building on the corner is now a historic B&B, &B, but it's 
originally a bank of commerce. And you can see the many limestone buildings beside the bus. They're all built the same method. You dig a hole in the ground and with what you take out of the hole in the ground, you build the walls of your house. The really expensive buildings are those made of brick, like one on Steve's side of the bus. The bricks had to be brought in from Montreal or Toronto. These old homes sell in excess of a million dollars each, by the way. Mainly because you people from Toronto are buying them. You're bringing all your money. But beautiful limestone homes. We just passed uh, one of the, the limestone homes. It was called the Belvedere Hotel. It closed down during the pandemic. And uh, they, they just went bankrupt, really. It was unfortunate. But it's one of my favorite buildings. <coughs> because during World War II, Mackenzie King, the Prime Minister of Canada, would come to Kingston, and he'd stay in that hotel, the Belvedere. And he stayed there because he was, try he was holding seances trying to contact Sir John A. Macdonald, our first Prime Minister, uh, for advice on how to run the country during World War II. When he couldn't get hold of Sir John A. Macdonald, he tried to contact his mother. And if he couldn't get hold of his mother, he tried to contact his pet dog. <laughs> that, that's our Prime Minister of Canada, elected three times. But the reason why he stayed at that hotel is because he was contacting Sir John A. Macdonald and Today you'll just see a square limestone platform just over beside the bus there. Sir Johnny Macdonald's statue was there, a tribute to our most famous citizen from Kingston, uh, the father of Confederation, the first Prime Minister of Canada. But unfortunately over the previous years, uh, well, he's being, now try, they're trying to measure him with today's social norms. and. Many of us don't feel it's, it's fair to try and judge somebody from the 1800s by today's social norms. It's just not the way things are done. But anyway, they got tired of removing red paint from Sir John's statue, so they've taken it down now and they've moved it to his grave site, which is also located here in the city of Kingston. But that's where Sir John A's statue used to live. He was uh, not born in Kingston, born in Glasgow, Scotland in 1815, came to Kingston at the age of five, he went to the local school system, got involved in local politics, became a lawyer at the age of 15, local politician, and the first Prime Minister of Canada in 1867. So he is our most famous citizen, and we're proud to say that he is from Kingston, Ontario. This chunk of land here is where the Parliament buildings of Canada were going to be built. The, you see the Parliament buildings up in Ottawa. That building was supposed to be here, made out of limestone. But when the capital was taken away from us, the land was given back to the city, and we've used it as a park ever since. So this is City Park. Just across the street, just across the street, these people built their houses in the early 1840s, thinking that they'd have the pomp and pageantry of Parliament Hill over here, the cooling effects of Lake Ontario in their backyard over here. So. It didn't work out for them, but we're left today with some of the most beautiful Victorian buildings in all of Canada. And some of the most expensive Victorian buildings in all of Canada, too. So here's a beautiful limestone building. And my favorite is right beside it, a Tudor design type building. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yes, a lot of work. Can you imagine the heating bill? Also coming up on Steve's side of the bus, on the driver's side, the fourth of the Martello Towers. This one is called the Murney Tower. And it is operated as a museum by the Kingston Historical Society. 
you can take the tour, find out what it was like, the soldiers who spent their time inside defending us from the Americans. On the door side of the bus is the newer portion of Kingston General Hospital. But more importantly, on Steve's side of the bus, you'll see a piece of art. It's two sewer pipes with pollution in the middle. It's called pollution. It was a gift from the province of Quebec for our 300th birthday. We don't like it either, and we'd like to give it to you if you take it. <laughs> Just attach it to the bus when you leave. To Kingston General Hospital has its roots back in 1835. The historic site is on the back, and we'll go there in just a moment and take a peek at it. But coming up again on Steve's side of the bus, Lake Ontario. And a piece of land that separates us from the water is called Breakwater Park. And because we're on the edge of Queen's University, the pathway that goes down the middle of this park is called Philosopher's Way. It's where Queen's University students are supposed to walk and think deep thoughts and solve the world's problems. They're working on it. Yeah, they're probably thinking about where they can get a beer. But... but it gives you a nice view of Wolf Island and Lake Ontario. On the other side of Wolf Island is the state of New York. Also on Steve's side, a gift from the province of Ontario for our 300th birthday. This is called Time. They say in time the two ends will come together. But I've been coming through here for 30 years and I've never seen the move. On the door side of the bus, these are some of the dormitories for the Queen's University students. These were built in 1976 and used by the Olympic athletes when the Olympics came to Kingston. It's true, and I'll explain in just a little bit. These are all the Queen's, uh, Queen's University students who haven't left town for the summer. They just hang out on the grass getting a suntan. It's a nice part to do it. up on the uh, door side of the bus, this white and green building. This is Hales Cottages, built by Charles Hales, a grocer in 1841. It was just a, a quick housing project for the military officers and the politicians coming to the new capital in 1841. Didn't expect them to last, but here they are still standing. When they come up for sale, people line up to buy them. The people of Kingston love the idea of owning some of the history of the city. So those basically townhomes built 180 years ago are selling for about $1.25 billion this year. It's unbelievable the amount of money. And I know you guys are only on a day trip, but you should come and spend the night in Kingston. We've got some wonderful hotels. Best hotel in the city is coming up here. Don't ruin my tour. Best hotel in the city is coming up here on Steve's side of the bus, and we know it's the best hotel in the city because anybody who goes there stays at least two years. for the young town. So it's provided jobs. So this is the one that they built at its peak. It held 500 of the worst politicians in Can I'm sorry, 500 of the worst people in Canada. They finally closed it down in 2013. The government at the time said it was too old to do its job properly. And nobody got out of jail free. 
and, and nobody lost a job. They were all just transferred to other prisons in the country. And there are lots of prisons in the country today, but this was our very first one. And as the country needed more prisons, they'd always petition the provinces. They'd say, who wants to host a penitentiary? And nobody wanted them, because it, it was a stigma attached to the community that you had a prison. But we already had one, so we, said, we didn't care. We'd say, okay, we'll take it. So at one time, we had nine federal penitentiaries in the city of Kingston. We are still today the penitentiary capital of Canada. They opened this one up for tours in 2013, and as the sign says, they're sold out again today. They've been giving tours throughout the summer months since 2013, and they're always sold out. I believe it's now $45 for a three-hour tour. So if you can't get in across there, though, try over here. This is the Penitentiary Museum, the warden's residence. The man who was in charge of the prison over here had a house built here in the 1870s, built by prison labor. And inside here you'll see uh, weapons confiscated from the inmates, methods of restraint and punishment, the whips, cat and nine tails. The whips were still used in this prison across the street as late as 1971. I thought that was hard to believe. But you can see that kind of information and prisoner art and escape attempts all chronicled in that building. And it's still free to go in. So, well worth a visit if you get the opportunity. And we're very nonchalant about the prisons in Kingston. We really don't let them bother us at all. No, no, this prison is now closed. But Paul Bernardo was moved out to Millhaven, and just recently he was transferred to Quebec. So he's no longer in Kingston. But look what's right next door to Kingston Penitentiary. <laughs> Some of the finest sailing facilities in the world. This is where we hosted the 1976 Olympic Games. Montreal hosted the Games that year, but they didn't have a venue for sailing events. But Kingston is known as the freshwater sailing capital of the world. So we held the sailing events for the 1976 Olympic Games right here. The Olympic flame burned in that triangular structure out in the middle, and every time they gave out a gold medal, the TV camera was on the uh, right-hand side, shooting back to the this way. So every time they gave out a gold medal, in the background was Kingston Penitentiary. It was like a commercial for the prison system. But from here you get that wonderful view of the size of Kingston Penitentiary going all the way down to Lake Ontario. People ask, why, they, why did they build it on the waterfront? It's such expensive property. Well, they built it in 1832, and it was so far outside the city that no one... And there were no roads at that time between Montreal and Toronto. The only road was Lake Ontario. So everything that was shipped had to go on Lake Ontario by boat. And everything that was delivered to the penitentiary was delivered by boat. And that's why they had to be on the lake. So today the property is for sale if you'd like to buy it. Good luck. It'll cost you a few dollars, I'm sure. I have no idea of the asking price, but I do know it's a very polluted piece of property and you'd have to clean it up before you can. We're in a little village called Portsmouth. It was a separate community from the city of Kingston at one time, but it's all part of Kingston now since it was amalgamated in the 1950s. And a lot of young people like you guys are bringing their money to Kingston and they're buying up the older limestone buildings in this little community and turning it into a wonderful little place to live. It's got everything you need, of course. A neighborhood pub just down the street is very good. It's got a subway uh, sandwich shop. It's got a drugstore for your cannabis. The Tim Hortons, and it's also got it's also got my favorite little church, and that's going to be our next stop. On the door side of the bus, the name of the church. The sign is a little faded, but it's the Church of the Good Thief. The perfect church for Kingston and all the prisons. When they decided to build this in the 1890s, 
it was common to ask the community for volunteers to help build the church. So the church put out a call for volunteers. The only people who agreed to help build it was the people at Kingston Penitentiary. They'd do anything for a day out of jail, I guess. So they came over, dug a hole in the ground, took out the stone and used it to build the walls of the church. When it came time to name the church in honor of the people who volunteered to build it, they called it St. Dismas, the patron saint of the condemned man. St. Dismas was the good thief crucified on the right hand side of Christ. So you can still see St. Dismas today above the front door. He's on the cross looking back at the people who built the church. He's looking back at Kingston Penitentiary. In recent years, the church has gone bankrupt. They ran out of money, not enough people attending church anymore. So they've sold the property off to a local developer who's built condos on the back and on the side. But the church itself, we wouldn't let him tear it down. So he gave it back to the church, and they're now going to use it for a storage facility for church documents. So, And hopefully at some point in time, they'll open it up so we can take you through it and take a look. It's a very beautiful church, but it is the Church of the Good Thief. And people in Kingston love that designation. You can't do anything to the outside of your building without permission from the Heritage Society. You can do anything you want inside, but people love the designation. They love to be a part of the city's history. The more there. We'd like to go straight. So we're going to head back to the city of Kingston. And as we go up this little knoll, just get around the corner here a little bit, and there you go. As we get up this knoll on the, the door side of the bus, you'll see a concrete wall that stands about 15, 20 feet high. So there's the concrete wall, and there's the evil building behind it. It's obviously another prison, but then never mind that. Across the street, this is the West Campus of Queen's University. This is the Faculty of Education. Some of the best teachers in Canada are developed right here. And directly behind this is Richardson Stadium. That's where Queen's Golden Gales plays football, rugby, soccer, that sort of thing. So. This is a post-secondary educational facility, and this over here is a post-secondary educational facility too, sort of. But it's a special penitentiary. Steve's gonna stop the bus. You guys read the sign above the front door and you'll know exactly what it is. A little difficult to see today, but it says, at the very peak, 1930, and below it, prison for women. If any ladies would like to get out, this would be a good time. But Prior to 1930, ladies, if you lived in Vancouver or Halifax, all across the country, if you committed a crime that required a sentence of two years plus one day, you would be brought to Kingston to spend your time with the men across the street inside Kingston Penitentiary. There was no separate penitentiary for women at that time. Finally, in 1930, the government said there were enough women in the penal system that they should have their own penitentiary. So they sent the inmates over here, and they built the prison for women. They finally opened it up in 1932. This was the only penitentiary for women in Canada's history. They closed it in the year 2000. They said it was cruel and unusual punishment because for men in Canada, they can spend time close to their social networks, their support groups, because there's been male prisons all the way from the West Coast to New Brunswick and all across the country. But for women, this was the only one. So they closed this one down and they've opened up six regional facilities for women across the country. We no longer have a prison for women in Canada. That's how low the crime rate is amongst women. You guys are pushovers. It's all a numbers game. According to the 2010 census, there's 15,000 federal inmates in the system in Canada today. How many are women? Any ideas? 
15,000 total. Male and female. How many are women? 10,000? 10,000. 10 people. A few more than that. My wife's family should all be in prison. 600. 600 women in the federal penitentiary system in Canada today. That included Carla Homolka. This is where she spent her time in Kingston. But, this, but today she's living in Montreal. Yeah. And Paul Bernardo was just transferred this past week. He's no longer in Kingston. He's been transferred to Quebec, and there's a big stink about it. They want him to come back to Kingston. We say farewell to bad rubbish, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, today with this one being closed, that one being closed across the street, we are still the federal penitentiary capital of Canada. Today we still have six working federal penitentiaries in the city. So if you need a room for the night, we can help you out.